Now we are going to learn about executive development. Executive development is a systematic process of learning and growth by which managerial personnel gain and apply knowledge, skills and attitudes and insights to manage the work in their organizations efficiently and effectively in an organized manner. The main aim is to improve their behavior and performance for their present job as well as to do the next higher level jobs. Learn about the concept and characteristics of executive development. Understand the difference between the training and executive development. Learn about the objectives of executive development. Identify the process of executive development. Appreciate that there are different techniques of executive development. Executive development is a systematic process of learning and growth by which managerial personnel gain and apply knowledge, skills and attitudes and insights to manage the work in their organizations efficiently and effectively in an organized manner. The aim is to improve their behavior and performance for their present jobs as well as to the next higher level jobs. According to Edwin B. Flippo, management development includes the process by which managers and executives acquire not only skills and competencies in their present jobs, but also capabilities for future managerial tasks of increasing difficulty and scope. Characteristics of the process of executive development are Executive development is a planned and organized process of learning. It is a continuous process of learning that helps the executive in his professional career throughout his life. A long-term process to build necessary skills for his career. Executive development depends upon the individual himself. It is learning and development of his own where no pressure is put upon the employees, rather he is encouraged and guided for adapting new things gradually. It aims at realizing the full potential of the executives in the organization. Generally, people confuse the meaning of training with development. There is a need to differentiate between the two. Training is a short-term process to enhance the knowledge and skills of non-managerial personnel for a specific job particularly in technical and mechanical operations. Executive development is a long-term continuous process for managerial personnel to be able to learn conceptual and philosophical concepts. It is not meant for a specific purpose, but believes in enhancing learning and skills over a period of time. Training is considered to be a reactive process to meet the current needs. Development is a proactive process to prepare the executives for meeting any future needs. The program of executive development aims at achieving the following objectives. Improving the performance of managers, exploit the full potential of executives by providing them with continuous development in their careers, Preparing managers to procure higher positions easily, aiming at developing executives at all levels, adapting new ways of handling things, new technology, and updating them in all respects related to their jobs. Other objectives are preventing skills obsolescence, by exposing managers to latest skills, concepts, and techniques. It aims at fulfilling their career aspirations, motivating and encouraging managers to learn continuously and providing them with job satisfaction, aiming at optimal utilization of human and non-human resources.
In order to start an executive development program, there is a series of steps that need to be undertaken. These are analysis of development needs, assessing managerial talent, executive manpower inventory, development programs, establishing training and development programs, evaluating development programs. We shall discuss these in detail. The first step is analysis of development needs. Conducting an executive development program requires a systematic analysis of various needs such as the present and future needs of the organization, a critical analysis of the organizational structure in terms of its departmental needs and key executive positions, a job description and job specification, analysis for various executive positions at different levels, and the changing needs of the organization in terms of technology, government regulation, and economic environment. Next step is assessing managerial talent. The present managerial talent should be assessed on the basis of its standard and expected performance, its personal traits, and on this basis, the type of executive development program should be started. The third step is preparing an executive manpower inventory. This inventory is prepared to obtain the complete information such as age, education, experience, etc. about each executive. This information helps in finding the strengths and weaknesses of executives in the present job as well as helping in determining the future needs of the organization. Next is the development of programs. An organization can organize different individual development programs that may be tailor-made depending upon the individual characteristics such as physical, intellectual, and emotional needs. The fifth step is establishing training and development programs. On the basis of the analysis, various training and development programs can be prepared, such as personality development, developing leadership and decision-making skills, interpersonal organizational relationships, stretch management, and so on. This will build confidence among executives and enable them to move towards success and job satisfaction. And the last step is evaluating the development programs. Evaluating development programs. Whether the objective laid out for the development program has been achieved or not, these programs must be evaluated because a huge amount of time and money and effort also has been you know, involved in organizing and conducting it. The purpose for which such development programs were prepared and conducted should be fulfilled. This can be checked by taking to or by talking to executives also and knowing their reactions towards it. Now we are going to learn about the various techniques of executive development. Moving on, let us now discuss the various types of techniques of executive development. There are basically two types of techniques, on the job and off the job technique. These techniques have various methods. In case of on-the-job technique, there are various methods like coaching, understudy, position rotation, project assignment, committees, multiple management system, and selected readings, which is used in case of executive development. On-the-job training. There are various methods of on-the-job training. 
Let us discuss a few of them. Coaching. The guidance and instruction is given to the trainee on the job by the coach on mutually set goals, their achievements, and reviewing their progress at that time and providing them with the assistance wherever needed. This method is suitable for developing operative skills and leads to learning by doing. Understudy. In this method, an executive is selected who is given training so that he can perform the job in the absence of superiors or in case of transfers, promotions, etc. The main aim of this method is that an executive is prepared for handling managerial positions as competent persons whenever the need arises. Job or position rotation. In this method, an executive is transferred from one position to another position on the basis of some planned criteria. This gives a chance to every executive to broaden his knowledge, skills, and increase the perception of looking at different things differently. Project assignment. In this method, a project is given to the trainee related to the functional areas, and they have to come up with solutions to the problems associated with the project. Committee assignment. In this method, a committee is constituted comprising of executives who investigate and take action for any problem and make recommendations regarding any matter relating to the organizations. Through discussion in the meetings, they get acquainted with different viewpoints and alternative methods of problem solving. management. In this method, a junior board is constituted for the purpose of training where problems are discussed and the board gives recommendations to the seniors or board of directors. This method is also called a junior board method that helps middle level executives to develop decision making skills, teamwork, enabling managers to see things from the organization rather than the individual. Selective readings. This method aims at developing skills in human resource of the organization by reading selected professional books, magazines, and journals to gain present job knowledge through literature. Reading a current management literature helps to avoid managerial obsolescence. For this purpose, organizations may have libraries for their executives and human resource. And then off-the-job executive development method includes lectures, case studies, group discussions, conferences, role-playing, management games, in-basket exercises, sensitivity training, and programmed instructions. We will learn, first of all, on-the-job techniques. Let us now discuss the methods of off-the-job training. These are lectures. Lectures are delivered by specific persons or instructors having a specialized knowledge on technical information on related topics of complex nature. It can be supplemented by discussions, video presentations, case studies, etc. It is very useful when facts, concepts, principles, attitudes, and problem-solving skills are to be taught. Group discussions. In this method, seminars and conferences are conducted in the organization and the trainee presents a paper on the topic given, which is followed by a critical discussion. Case study method. In this method, a case study is given to the executive and aims at finding out a solution for it. Executives analyze the problem, suggest and evaluate alternative courses of action and choose the most appropriate solution. The trainer guides the discussion and ensures that no relevant fact is overlooked. Conference method. It is a formal group meeting conducted with an organized plan where participants deal with problems, give ideas and opinions to solve the problems effectively. It is an effective method of learning where employees learn from the suggestions and ideas of others 
having different viewpoints. Role playing. In this method, learning and training starts with a dramatic role to be played by executives related to the work. It is a method of human interaction that aims at bringing desired changes in attitudes and behavior and involves a realistic behavior in an imaginary or hypothetical situation. Management games. In this method, exercises are given to the executive teams to compete against one another to achieve a given objective. These games or exercises are designed in terms of real organizational situations. The trainees are asked to take decisions as to the production, cost, research and development, etc. for the organizations. They learn to overcome the stressful situation through these exercises. Next method is in-basket exercise. In this method, trainee is required to do manager's job from an administrative perspective. He is offered a work to perform as if a manager is performing it. A trainee is provided with a basket of papers and files related to his functional area that may carry mails, reports, message, minutes, memos and many other papers. Now the trainee has to review the basket items and then take actions on these varied issues and problems using action forms to record notes, comments and responses. Now the actions are, are assessed and rates and they are rated also based on the job related competencies through a formal question and answers session by a group of trained raters. Basically administrative skills are assessed in this technique that would be helpful in taking supervisory action for a specific performance. Another method is a programmed instructions. Under this method the trainee is asked specific questions and on the basis of his answers he is moved on to the next appropriate section for review. The material information is broken into meaningful units and it is arranged in a proper way to form a learning package, a logical learning package. Next comes the method sensitivity training. This method is also known as T group training and its purpose is to increase the awareness of self behavior, personal competence, teamwork skills, emotional issues and sensitivity to one's own behavior, particularly when a person interacts with others. A trainee also gets to know about other feelings and behavior through this free and open environment wherein participants they discuss themselves. The main benefits of training, such kind of training are increased group interaction and self-awareness, learning through interaction, exposure and sensitivity towards one's own behavior. Able to learn also about others behavior and attitude ability to analyze interpersonal and intergroup situations. In this method, also there is a face-to-face -face interaction and confrontation. This technique may be criticized because it might induce stress and anxiety among trainees as they have to reveal through behavioral aspects which actually they may not be willing to share and can also cause serious psychological damage or behavior breakdown to the participants. Activity training. This method is also called T-group training. According to Chris R. Grice, sensitivity training is a group experience designed to provide maximum possible opportunity for individuals to expose their behavior, give and receive feedback, experiment with new behavior, and develop awareness of self and of others. In this method, the focus is on face-to-face -face interaction and confrontation. This technique comprises of three steps, unfreezing the old values, development of new values, and refreezing the new ones. Transactional analysis. It is a technique used to help people better understand their own and others' behavior. In every social interaction, there is a motivation provided by one person and reaction to that motivation is given by another person. 
this motivation reaction relationship between two people is known as transaction this theory was developed by dr eric burn and is based on the concepts of psychotherapy and comprises of three ego states the three ego states are parent it is a collection of recordings in the brain of an individual related to behavior attitudes and impulses imposed on a child in childhood from various sources such as society parents friends etc the features that are portrayed by individuals in this stage are being judgmental rule making bossy isolated rigid and overprotective etc adult it is a collection of reality testing rational behavior decision making etc the person in this ego state verifies updates the reaction which has been received from the other two states child it is a collection of recordings in the brain of the individual of behaviors attitudes and impulses which come naturally from our own understanding as a child the features of this state are that it is spontaneous intense unconfident relevant anxious etc transactions are the flow of communication it occurs simultaneously at both explicit and psychological levels strokes are recognition attention or responsiveness that one person gives to the other strokes can be positive or negative let us now summarize what we have learned in this module in this module we have discussed the concept of executive development its features objectives and the techniques of executive development that is on the job techniques on the job coaching under study position rotation project assignment committees multiple management and selected readings off the job lectures case studies group discussions conferences role playing management games in basket exercise sensitivity training and transactional analysis now we are going to learn about executive development executive development is a systematic process of learning and growth by which managerial personnel gain and apply knowledge skills and attitudes and insights to manage the work in their organizations efficiently and effectively in an organized manner the main aim is to improve their behavior and performance for their present job as well as to do the next higher level jobs If we look at the features of executive development it is a planned and organized process of learning a continuous process of learning which will help executive in his professional career throughout life a long term process to build necessary skills for career executive development depends upon the individual himself it is learning and development of his own where no pressure is put upon employees rather he is encouraged and guided for adapting new things gradually it aims at realizing the full potential of the executives in the organization if we need to distinguish between the training that we have learned earlier and development then we will say that training is a short term process to enhance the knowledge and skills of a non managerial personnel for a specific job particularly in technical and mechanical operations Executive development is a long term continuous process for managerial personnel to be able to learn conceptual and philosophical concepts. It is not meant for a specific purpose but believes in enhancing learning and skills over a period of time. 
Training is considered to be a reactive process to meet the current needs and development is a proactive process to prepare the executives for meeting any future needs. So, we can say that the objectives of executive development includes improving performance of managers, exploit full potential of executives by providing them with continuous development in their careers, preparing managers to procure higher positions easily. It aims at developing executives at all levels, adapting new ways of handling things, new technology and updating them in all respects related to their jobs, preventing skills obsolescing by exposing them to the latest skills, concepts and techniques. It also aims at fulfilling their career aspirations, motivating and encouraging managers to learn continuously and providing them with the job satisfaction. Now after learning the concept of executive development, the process of executive development starts with analysis of the development needs. Conducting an executive development program requires a systematic analysis of various needs in the organization such as the present and the future needs. A critical analysis of the organization's structure in terms of its departmental needs and key executive positions and a job description and job specification, analysis for various executive positions at different levels, changing needs of the organizations in terms of technology, government regulations and economic environment. Then we also process uh, includes assessing managerial talent. The present managerial talent should be assessed on the basis of his standard and expected performance, his personal traits and on this basis the type of executive development program should be started. Then executive manpower inventory. This inventory is prepared to obtain the complete information such as age, education, gender, experience about an executive. It helps in finding the strength and weaknesses of the executives in the present job as well as helps in determine the future needs of the organization. Then development programs. An organization can organize different individual development programs that may be tailor-made depending upon the individual characteristics such as physical, intellectual and emotional. Then establishing training and development program. On the basis of the above analysis, various training and development programs can be prepared such as personality development, developing leadership and decision making skills, interpersonal organization relationships and stress management. Evaluating development programs. Whether the objective laid out for the development program has been achieved or not, these programs must be evaluated because a huge amount of time and money and effort also has been you know, involved in organizing and conducting it. The purpose for which such development programs were prepared and conducted should be fulfilled. This can be checked by taking to or by talking to executives also and knowing their reactions towards it. Now we are going to learn about the various techniques of executive development. There are different categories. One is on the job technique and other is off the job technique. In case of on the job technique, there are various methods like coaching, understudy, position rotation, project assignment, committees, multiple management system and selected readings which is used in case of executive development. And then off the job executive development method includes lectures, case studies, group discussions, conferences, role playing, management games, in basket exercises, sensitivity training and programmed instructions. 